All right, welcome back. Now we're going to be talking about the pelvic girdle and the lower extremities. Lower extremities. All right, let's focus on the pelvic girdle right now. What you would notice uh, definitely very clearly here that it is composed of two bones. Uh, this is a right coxal bone, so the entire structure is one coxal bone, the right one here and the left coxal bone, all right? Each coxal bone is composed of three bones. You notice that here is the ilium, superiorly. Anteriorly, we have the pubic bone. And inferiorly, we have the ischium, okay? An important um, joint to notice here is definitely the sacroiliac joint that is found here in here, sacroiliac joint, obviously because it involves this sacrum and the ilium. Viewing the right coxal bone laterally, we notice many landmarkings or structures. So some of the structures you should be aware of, of course, would be on the ilium, would be the iliac crest, uh, if we move anteriorly, we notice the anterior superior iliac spine. If we move posteriorly, would be the posterior superior iliac spine. So we move inferiorly, now we're talking about a totally different area here. Notice this pointy structure. It looks like a spine and is found within the ischium, which is an ischial bone. So this would be the ischial spine. As we move inferiorly, we notice that there's a structure that protrudes outwardly. It's very thick, it needs to be thick because this is what we sit on. This would be the ischial tuberosity. And as we move anteriorly, we notice here a structure, well, la let's say laterally. We, mo we notice this crevice here, this, this fossa. It's actually this fossa, we're gonna call this the acetabulum and the acetabulum accepts the femoral head. As we move anteriorly on this model, we notice that we have the pubic bone and two pubic bones coming together. You can think of it as an orchestra. This makes the structure called as uh, named the pubic symphysis. Now the arch that you see beneath here or inferiorly is actually the pubic arch. And now notice these two holes here, this hole here and here. These are the obturator foramina. So this is obturator for right obturator foramen. This is the left obturator foramen. Now we're looking at the posterior aspect of um, this, the bones that we're studying and we're studying the landmark. So now we're gonna look at the femur, this entire, entire bone is the femur, okay? And the structures within the femur are the following. Notice we talked a little bit about the fact that there's an acetabulum on the coxal bone, on the right coxal bone here. But this structure right here would be the femoral head. Here we have the, the, uh, the neck of the femur. Uh, and you can notice these pronounced structures that stick out. Actually, this would be the greater trochanter this would be the lesser trochanter as we move uh, in fear. And, and these structures cannot really be seen as well from the anterior view. So this is why I have this model uh, seen from the posterior view. Okay, something to keep in mind when we want to know our left and rights. And as you notice here, we're moving, we've moved distally on the femur and we're looking at the structures posteriorly. Here we have condyles. We have um, condyle on the right side. Um, so this would be laterally, so we have a lateral condyle and a medial condyle, and in between we have an intercondylar fossa, okay? Now we're at the distal aspect of the femur by where the patella is, okay? And we're going to move further distally. We're now on the tibia. This is the tibia here, okay? Uh, so the tibia is always going to be located medially whereas the fibula will always be located laterally. Therefore, this would be the right or left. Hmm, this would have to be your left. How do I know?
because we notice that there's a structure here known as the medial malleolus. This is a little knob that I had you guys touch in class, in laboratory. And now you move laterally, you have a lateral malleolus, which is found on the fibula. Now let's go back to the proximal aspect of the tibia. And we notice a very interesting structure that I had you guys find um, about an inch, inch and a half uh, below your uh, patella. This uh, structure that protrudes, this is the tibial tuberosity, okay? Now, as we look at the foot, we notice that there are a few structures that you're responsible for. Uh, this would be the calcaneus here. Uh, here we would have the talus that interacts directly with the tibia. And now the foot itself, we know that we have um, the toe, which is right here, is composed of a distal phalanx and a proximal, proximal phalanx. Therefore, this would be a metatarsal. And back here, or I guess you, you would have to say more proximal in relation to the metatarsals, we would have the tarsals. Uh, also, um, on the other toes, or the, other, the other phalanges, we have these little bones that make them up, and some of them are missing, so forgive that, this model. This is actually a real model, and you'll notice here we have a distal, middle, and proximal phalanx, P-H-A-L-A-N-X. All right, I think that's about it. That about covers the lower extremities. I hope you enjoy it, and... Um, I hope that uh, you all earn an A++ on the exam on Monday and Tuesday. Bye-bye.